Hello, it's Angel again. How is everybody doing this week? Uh, it's good to see y'all coming back and watching the videos. That's awesome. Been a little sick, so my voice is kind of wonky. But, um, so I thought of something fun I would like to try today. I've got this little thing that I normally do whenever I'm meeting people, and since I'm just meeting a bunch of you, I thought I would do this. Um, so it starts out, you're walking through a jungle. You've got a horse, a cow, a lion, a sheep, and a monkey. And you come to a watering hole. And this watering hole is only big enough for you and four of the animals. You've got to leave one behind. Which one do you leave behind? And so now is where you decide which one you would want to leave behind. And then I continue on and I say, okay, you have whatever animals you have left from the horse, the cow, the monkey, the sheep, and the lion. And, uh, you know, you're walking through a jungle with those four animals and you come to a watering hole, it's only big enough for you, you and three of the animals. You've got to choose another one to leave behind. So now you decide which one you want to leave behind. And so now we're going on and we're going to say you're walking with whatever animals you had left from the horse, the cow, the monkey, the lion, and the sheep. And you know, you're walking along and you come to a watering hole that only has enough water for you and two of the animals. You've got to leave another one behind. And so then you, uh, we continue on, you decide, we continue on, and we are walking through a jungle and you have what animals you have left from your horse, your cow, your monkey, your lion, and your sheep. And we come to a watering hole that's only big enough for you and one animal. Which animal do you keep? Now what I want you to do is I want you to remember all of five of those animals and the order in which you drop them down. So uh, go ahead and remember those and then I'm going to take you on a little look of the garden and some things I want to get done and some things that I've got uh, to start harvesting and different things like that. So I um, haven't seen the garden in a little bit so we'll go ahead and look at that. So. Remember your answers, and we'll be back. Here I've got the toothache plant. I've harvested this twice really good down to next to no flowers, and it's come back with even more flowers every time. I definitely have plenty of seeds for next year, and I have a lot frozen in the freezer to use if anybody you know, has a toothache and I'm also this winter going to work on um, learning how to do a mouthwash with it. So here behind me, all of this here is lemongrass. So I'm going to cut back a lot of this lemongrass, all of it really, because it won't last next year. So I'm going to take down all of this lemongrass and I'm going to freeze some of it and then I'm going to dehydrate some of it for use in teas. The frozen lemongrass will be able to be used for cooking. Very excited about that. I love lemongrass. It's so yummy. Okay, over here I have two hibiscus plants and in the middle of it I have a couple of roselle red plants. These are a member of the hibiscus family and from what I understand, I've never done this before, this is my first time growing it, is you open up one of these and if what is inside is green then the flower has fallen off and then what you do is you take off this seed pod because that's what it is, is a seed pod and you pull back these leaves here 
and you dry them and that's what you use for the hibiscus roselle red tea sorry there was a bee <laughs> so i've got a lot of those to plant and look at this you see that so beautiful it looks like a okra flower and it's not that much different from the hibiscus flowers they're so pretty up here are the cucamelons I have quite a few and I think I'm going to try and do a small jar of refrigerator pickles with them just to see what that tastes like so down here under the hibiscus and the roselle red I had completely forgotten I planted these really unusual beans here and I've got a couple that are growing they're really cool I'm excited to try them definitely don't have enough for a meal but it's good to see them growing and they were a complete surprise because I completely forgot about planting them now speaking of completely forgetting to plant about planting something over here I had some kale and the kale is done and I pulled it out and I found these which is a really beautiful bean I've got to look it up and see what it's called don't remember planting these at all but they are a wonderful surprise sometimes you just get out in the garden and you start plopping seeds into holes and see what grows and forget to put a tag and forget to remind yourself to remember but it's always a good surprise here is where I just showed you the beans. I've got a lot of Swiss chard and the kale. You can see the moths really got to the kale. It's sad, it's just getting pulled up. Here's some of the flowers for those beans. If you can see them, the sun's a little bright. There's a white one and a yellow one. What I'm going to do in the plan for this week is to cut back this Swiss chard as much as I can. Just leave a few little leaves in the middle and just cut it back completely so that it can just have a fresh start for the fall and see what we get. Okay, so here is Jay's peppers. He is big in the peppers. He's the pepper guy and he has uh joined all of these groups on you know different social media sites and the group one of the groups he's in is having a contest about growing peppers in cans and so he's really really proud of these peppers planted them got a bunch growing they're coming out he's super excited just thought i'd show you that here we have the tomatillas. I am calling the tomatillas a fail. They've still got little ones in there, but the plants themselves just seem like they are not happy or doing well. This one here might be the only usable one we've got. Um, Jay and I talked about it and we're not gonna do tomatillas again next year. Like the pineapple tomatillas, the ground cherries, yes, but like the tomatillas for salsa and stuff, we're not gonna do. It's just, um, we haven't had luck with it. We're not doing good. They take up, they got really big and little invasive and didn't have good luck with them. And everything we would use those for, we can use green tomatoes for. I have jars full of green tomato salsa verde which is absolutely delicious in the house from that i processed last year and i still have that left so 
you know, we'll definitely have green tomatoes every year. So there's no reason for us to grow the tomatillias and the take up space in the garden. So not doing those this year. Over here, the squash bugs have found the moon and stars melons. In previous videos, I talked about the moon and stars melons. They're so beautiful. So I'm just trying to keep a close eye on the bigger melons, like this guy here. Waiting to see when he's ripe. I'd like to get him before the squash bugs do. And at least that would make it worth it if we get a melon or two out of this batch. We have, I think, me and Jay counted seven decent sized ones. And it looks like they're getting pretty close. So we're probably going to have some melons here soon. It's getting a little sweaty out here. Um, over here is something else I was going to show you. Uh, this is my horseradish. It was really big and lush and beautiful. And can you see that little white butterfly? All these little white butterflies flying around. They have laid their eggs. And they're babies. Can you see that? There. These little caterpillars are all over the horseradish and they're eating them up. So instead of beautiful leaves like that, I've got leaves like this. So I'm going to cut back all of these leaves and just leave the, leave the roots. They're I planted them last year, so I might see if there's a good chunk I can harvest to get some fresh fresh horseradish, but I definitely want to leave a lot of it so that it can come back again next year. So over here, I have um, a weed, I guess. It's an unwanted plant in this garden. I'm pretty sure it is poke. And I know there are some benefits for poke. Not sure what they are, but there's some of the ripe poke berries. I know they are poisonous, so I definitely am going to be very cautious with them. But, oh, look at this. Didn't even notice this. This is a volunteer bean from beans we had last year. Didn't even realize it. And they're drying out. Can you see that? I absolutely love volunteer plants. They are like my garden's little special presents to me. Now here behind me is my rows of tomatoes. Some of them are starting to look pretty bad, but yet just yesterday I came out and I was able to harvest a huge bowl, one of those big Halloween bowls you put candy in, harvest a huge bowl full of tomatoes. So I'm not done with them yet. When I am done with them, what I will do is I will come out and I will pick all of the green tomatoes and use those to make a sweet relish out of the green tomatoes. I did that last year. It was so good and uh, really enjoyed it and didn't have enough of it. So I'd like to make it again this year. Here is the mugwort I talked about before, and I'm thinking it's about ready for me to try and save some seeds. I really gotta figure out, if you know anything about saving seeds for mugwort, I'm really, really trying to find some information on that. So share below if you know anything about it. But I'm gonna get some of these stalks here that don't have any flowers on them. I'm gonna cut those and I'm gonna hang them upside down to dry for tea. Okay. 
peppers, peppers everywhere. There are so many peppers in this garden. Love peppers. I made some fresh salsa the other day and I used eight different or eight peppers four different kinds of peppers and it had no heat so I'm kind of excited that we're starting to get some of the super hots because just throw one of those in there and it'll have plenty of heat so we've got peppers that go let's see all the way here all the way there all the way down and then on the other side of the fence all the way back so there's so many peppers. Here is the okra finally coming in and we had fried okra the other night for dinner. It's so delicious. I love, 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 love fried okra. It is the most wonderful thing. But we've already got some here that need to be harvested. See one like right there. That one will get harvested today. But I'm just gonna let the okra go until it dies and I might keep a couple of okra plants in the ground until spring so that I can save some seeds from that. This bed here had peppers in it last year and we had two volunteer pepper plants come up that were surprises and they're producing peppers. That's what we need. We need more peppers. Okay, so the garden is in need of some TLC, like serious TLC. And it's been hot and it's been muggy and none of us have really wanted to mess with it. So now like days like today, it's really starting to feel like fall. So days like today, you know, the high today is supposed to be 80 degrees, so that is wonderful. These are days that I definitely plan on getting out in the garden and getting some of these chores that I really want done, done. And not all of them are even chores, really. I'm super excited about getting to harvest some things I've never harvested before and, you know, processing some things that I've never processed and, you know, cleaning out the beds and getting them ready for the winter so that in the spring they'll be ready and fresh and we can just start again. I debated on doing a fall garden. I just, you know, this summer's been so unusual and different. I think that not only do the beds need a little bit of rest and TLC and attention, but I feel like we need a little rest and TLC and attention. So, over here, I have a bunch of lemon balm. Oh, it smells so good. And I'm going to cut a lot of that back and hang it up to dry to use for teas. Have a little time. Have some more time. One is a creeping time. The other one is a common time. I'm going to plant those probably in the a little bit later once I get some of these beds cleared out so I can get those established in a bed before winter hits, see if they can survive the winter and if they come back to kick in next year. So that's about it. That's about all I've got going in the garden at least for this morning. Uh, for not getting over 80 degrees that certainly got sunny and a little sweaty out there. So um I'd just like to, you know, go back to what I started at the beginning of the video. Um, hopefully everybody remembers, you know, walking through the jungle with their horse, their 
cow, their monkey, their lion, and their sheep. Uh, and what order you drop them off on and, you know, set them free, whatever, and which one you ultimately kept. Um, now, this is, like I said, a little getting to know you thing, and I know I can't hear your answers, but maybe it'll help you get to know yourself a little bit better, because it was really enlightening for me when I did it. It didn't surprise me, but, um, you know, the different answers are supposed to represent different things in your life and the order in which you would be willing to give those things up. So you have the lion that represents your pride. You have the horse that represents your passion. You have the sheep that represents your friends. You have the cow and that represents your basic needs. And then you have the monkey, and the monkey represents your children. So tell me what you thought. Did it fit you? Were you, you know, do you think it didn't fit you? What do you think about it? Um, let me know your thoughts on it. Is this something you would do when you meet somebody as kind of an introduction? Um, it's just a little fun thing. I thought that might be something fun to do while showing you the garden. And I hope you enjoyed the garden. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for all of the comments I get. They're fabulous. And all of the new subscribers, welcome. And thank you for subscribing. And I really hope you enjoy watching the videos. And I, I just want to say I love your guts. And you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.